Hello and welcome to another Books with Becca. So today I'm going to talk about some informational graphic novels that are pretty cute. I do say so myself, which I do because I just did. All right, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is called Fire Mountain. Um, it is written by Glenn Downey and illustrated by Liam Thurston. It's a really good um, informational graphic novel. Um, it's about Pompeii and there is um, this, this, of course it follows the historical story, as, like the historical um, event itself. But to kind of like make the character, make the event feel more real for kids, they created like a little story for this about, um, it's a 10 year old slave named Cato. And he, he and his mom are slaves for like this master. And um, one day, of course, Pompeii starts to explode and Cato, gets his ankle kind of gets hurt and his, so his mom goes to get help but then like a hot lava or rock starts coming down and like he realizes that he needs to he can't wait he needs to escape so he meets up with his other friend diana and they try to escape um i'm not going to tell too much about the ending because i don't want to spoil it but what's really cool about this is that in the very beginning, it says which people, it provides a page that says real people in history. So Pliny the Elder and um, Pliny the Younger and Pompeius. And then it says which characters are fictional. So Cato, his mother, um, the slave master, and Diana. So what's also really cool is that there's a lot of, in, even though this is a fictional storyline set in a real historical event, it really does a good job providing facts. So in the introduction, it talks, uses headlines and talks a bit about um, to the history of certain volcanoes and, um, and it also provides a timeline and it helps explain to kids what BCE indicates. So I really like that. Um, it so it provides a lot of background information. I do think that this might be a better read for older children because the very first chapter it deals with you know slavery and um, he, the main character Cato is is hit by another slave master for something that really wasn't his fault. But what's really cool is that at the end of every chapter, at the end of every chapter, there's something called a timeout. It, it, um, once the chapter is over, it provides like an informational page on the, the, on the historical context of, what's, of what was happening in the chapter. So for example, this one was talking about Pompeii and Vesuvius. So that's what that one discussed. The next one focused a little bit more on slavery. So that's discussed. Um, and then at the end, it provides you, at the very end of the book, it provides even more information. So I thought it was a good read. Um, the illustration style is definitely unique and might not be for everyone. Personally, I didn't like the illustration style, but that's just me, and I'm sure many kids would enjoy it. Um, and I think this is a really important book for like bridging that, you know, hard to leap way from, you know, graphic novels to nonfiction. So this might be a good read for if you want to try to get your kids more into informational books because it really make, does a good job of making history real for kids. Well, the ending wasn't realistic. I understand why they did it the way they did. 
because it is a kid's book, so it has a happy ending. As, but um, so, well, I understand why they did that. You know, it's still a graphic novel for kids, so you don't want to end it with, and everybody died. So that's not the case in this um, graphic novel. It does have a somewhat happy ending. <laughs> All right. The next book that I'm going to talk about is he, it's better for younger kids who are really good readers. It's called Guinea P.I. Pet Shop Private Eye. And this is part of a series. So it's number one and it's called Hamster and Cheese. It's very cute. Um, it's by Colleen. Um, and it's written by Colleen A.F. Venable and illustrated by Stephanie Yu. Yu I? I actually was fortunate enough to hear Colleen speak at an event and she was just so lovely and she made me want to read her graphic novel. She was actually speaking about her first YA graphic novel, Kiss Number no. 8, which is a great YA graphic novel and I highly recommend it. Um, so this book is about, there's a pet store with all sorts of cute, furry, fluffy, adorable animals in it. And one day the, the G on the guinea pigs, um, the, the cage has the titles, little tiles on it that say what each animal is. And one day the G disappears off the guinea pig. So instead of guinea pig, it says guinea P.I. And another cute furry animal, a hamster, sees that his, the guinea pig's cage says guinea P.I. And he assumes that he's a pri private investigator and he asks him to help the case of the missing sandwich. So this is just so cute. It's quirky, it's adorable. Um, the illustrations are really, really cute. Um, <laughs> so it's Mr. or Sass Pants is the guinea pig, the guinea pig PI on the case. And Ham Hamish the ha ha hamster, Hamisher the hamster <laughs> is the one who asks him to solve the case of why the pet store owner's sandwich keeps going missing. And it's just, there's just like a cast of really funny characters, like the fish and the chinchillas. And they they just all are bursting with personality and it's really funny. I'm not gonna tell you who is stealing the sandwich because I don't wanna spoil it for you. Um, this is just a great read for younger kids enjoy cute talking animal stories. Um, there's nothing scary about the story and it is a series so if you like the person we have more. I do say I would say that this is definitely really text heavy so it's a good series for younger kids who are really good readers or you could read it with them. Um, and it's also informational because on the back of a big joke in the book, a big joke in the story is that the pet store owner is like, he doesn't really, he's not the brightest pet store owner in the book, so he's constantly like mislabeling the cages. So he calls like the hamsters koalas and he's just like labeling everything wrong. So in the back, it has um, information on animals not appearing in this book and how to tell the difference. So it provides different information. And it also provides a cool factoid about snakes and how they can swallow things that are a lot bigger than them. So I definitely think this is cute and I'll probably read the next one and check it out. All right, so the next one is definitely an informational graphic novel. It's called Fabian Cousteau Expeditions Great White Shark Adventures. Out of these three, this is the newest one. We just got it in April, as you can see by the four sticker. And it is, I mean, what kids don't like sharks, right? Sharks are cool. 
Um, it's based on the actual expeditions and facts. In fact, Fabien Cousteau is a real person. He um, explored lots of the sea and he does a lot for the ocean and sharks and the, all those causes. Um, I think who are looking for something a bit more advanced and informational than the Magic Treehouse series, but yet still in the same spirit of it, might really enjoy this. Um, the two main characters that are Fa Fabi and assistants are Bella and Marcus, and they're kind of like Jack and Annie of this graphic novel. So there's lots and lots and lots and lots of great information about sharks, why they're misunderstood, what is being done to protect them, as well as other marine creatures. Um, the illustrations are beautiful. See, as you can you know, see, this like this provides information about the anatomy of a shark. Um, there's lots of information about the um, different expeditions. Like, for example, this passage says, um, Ah, I lost my page. Well, anyway, information such as African penguins are found only in Southern African waters, particularly in Daya Island where they forage in the open ocean feeding on fish and squid like many other marine animals. They are now classified as endangered and have a lifespan between 10 and 27 years. So this is a very text heavy series um, book. It's says it's for kids ages 8 to 12, so I would say it's definitely for good readers who aren't afraid of sharks, of course. Um, the only thing that I didn't, wasn't a fan of, and it's just me personally, of course, is that the characters are constantly like spouting like too much information about every little thing. So it's just like, they're like sound less like real people and more like um, computers spouting <laughs> like a search engine almost. I also wish, like I understand that this is a very well researched graphic novel and it, uh, and it is, is provides tons of facts and um, information, but I wish there were educational materials, some resources provided in the back of the book, like further reading or something like that. Again, that's just two things that I personally thought, uh, but I still feel that this is definitely going to be a really popular read when we reopen, and I recommend it for sure. All right, I hope you enjoyed Books with Becca, and that is all for today. Have a great day. Bye.